Hello, my name is Peter Raymer. Today we're going to talk about how to use a D365 data entity. In a previous lesson, you learned what a data entity is and that we use them to import and export data from within Microsoft Dynamics 365 for finance and operations, and that data entities give us a really flat structure um, to be able to just map the fields more easily and not worry about all the related tables um, and relationships needed to really populate all those tables. Um, and then in another lesson, we actually looked at how to create a data, data entity. And in this lesson, we're actually gonna use that data entity to import and export from an Excel file. So let's get started. Um, so just as a quick review in Visual Studio, um, we created a data entity last time. Um, this is the only technical part that I'll show you as part of this lesson, but I just wanna remind you um, what this kind of looks like. We have a data entity. We're specifically working with this FM customer um, data source as well as uh, the, I, I guess, yeah, that's just the one data source we've got in here. Oh yeah, the FM address table. And then we've got these different fields that allow us to interact with these two data sources. And so if we actually look on the front end of our website and we go to the uh, customer's form, which you can find, um, in this case, it's a different customer form than the main one you're used to. Under Fleet Management Customers Customer, you can find this um, form. And inside of it, this is gonna contain the data for that FM customer record that we're talking about. And so you can see, we've got a few records here. I actually already imported this John Smith um, record with some fake data here um, and we're just going to do that again. So before we really get into this example, in order to see this demo data, you need to first uh, click on a button to set this up. And so if you actually go to the fleet management module um, and go to fleet setup, um, which is under fleet management setup, fleet setup. Then you'll get to this uh, fleet management configuration form on the data setup tab, there is this create button. So go ahead and click the create button. It'll take you know a few seconds or up to a minute. You'll get a dialog box saying that that uh, demo data was created for you. You can click okay. Then when you come back to this FM customer form, you're gonna see this demo data. So now we're uh, doing really well. Um, and now, uh, if w just as a reminder, there's really three main ways data entities are used in integrations. There's more than that. You can look at this whole chart. Um, but when we uh, kind of talk about data entities, there are API interfaces that uh, allow you to talk to data entities via OData. Um, we're actually not going to cover that in this lesson. Um, if you look at my couple other articles on use Postman to call uh, D365 data entities and set up Postman to call D365 data entities, this will give you all of the steps needed to um, generate a token, set up Azure, and then use Postman, which is a web service to, uh, tool to actually call and interact with those OData um, data entities. So that's one way. Another way is through file um, files, basically imports, exports, whether that be Excel or a CSV, um, that kind of thing. And then there's also um, business applications. And, and then in an ALM process, you might use data to or, or data entities to load up your system. So just wanted to review and make sure you understood the different ways we can use data entities and that there is more than one. So let's uh, jump in. So first place we need to go to is the data management workspace. So if I search for data management, I'm gonna see it under system administration workspaces data management, um, or I can go to workspaces data management. If you click on this icon on the left-hand side, we can actually see um, data management listed right there. So when I click on that, this is gonna take me to a slightly different looking form. This is called a workspace. Um, 
and specifically I want to check one thing first I want to make sure that the data entity that we created in the prior lesson exists and is actually recognized by the system so I'm gonna click on that data entities tile it's gonna bring me into this form it shows target entities um, up top and then I'm gonna scroll down until I can find that FM um, lab uh, data entity so we keep going and sure enough here it is I see one called FM lab customer uh, entity I also have FM tutorial customer um, entity these are really the same thing I just did it twice for um, my example all right now that we have validated that this entity is recognized by the system I can click X and go back to this main form the first thing we're going to do is export the data from that data entity so let's click the export button and or really tile it's going to bring us to this form we need to give it a group name so I'll just call this FM customers export I'll call it two because I think I created one once before. I'm gonna leave this data project export type to its default value of export since we clicked on the export button. And then I'm gonna click this add entity button under selected entities right here. Let's move this um, browser over just a little bit here. And then I'm going to get this pop up that I need to fill out this dialogue. So I need to first select the entity name that I wish to export. So again, I'm going to scroll down and look for um, that FM customer. And we get a little further FM lab customer entity and pick that. If you have a different entity, you're going to just select that from there. The next thing we need to do is select the data format of the file we're trying to export to. So you can actually see there's a lot in here. There's CSV, tab delimited, XML, tab separated, etc. cetera. Um, I'm gonna click on Excel. All right, that's all I need for now. I'm gonna then click the add button here. It's gonna go ahead and create a record in this grid for my data entity instance. You'll notice it still keeps the dialog um, form open. So we actually just wanna hit close for now. All right, now I'm all set. I uh, have specified what data entity I wanna export. I have specified um, the type of file I want it to export to. Um, I, the next thing I can do just to make sure is I can click this view map button. You can do this on export or import. Um, and if I click that, it's going to actually show me the mapping of my data entity to my target file. This may be a little less important when we're exporting and a little more important when we're importing, but wanted you to see that this is where we see that mapping um, and we can click mapping details and make changes to this if we um, want to change how, how those columns come out on our file. So I'll go ahead and close this for now. Now we're back here. Now I can finally click this export button up top or I can click export now or export in batch. I wanna cover briefly the difference. So export now is going to um, run that process and my browser's really just gonna wait for it to finish. And so if that's a long process, it's gonna hang my browser for a long time, maybe even time out my browser. Um, and so this is not usually a great option to run unless you know it's really a few records like uh, we're talking about here. Otherwise you can click export and batch, which will create a batch job and actually run it um, but your browser won't immediately get updated you'll need to refresh or click a refresh button to um, watch the status of that batch job and wait till it's complete so let's go ahead and click export and batch just so you can see what that looks like and it's going to say okay do you want this to run this batch job i'm going to say uh, okay and this is actually added to the batch shop queue. And actually it does look like if I click this export button, it'll do it a little bit differently. Um, so I'll go ahead and click that button now. 
says batch job scheduled. It's taken me directly into this execution summary. You can see the execution status is not run. If I click refresh, I can see it's now executing. And if I give it a few more seconds and click refresh again, I'll see that it's either succeeded or failed. So we'll just give it a second um, to run those records. But you can click keep clicking this refresh button on this execution uh, summary until you see it's completed. Um, the browser is not going to update automatically for you. Okay, my job has finished. We can see that the execution status is succeeded and I can see that seven records were exported. Now, um, it's important to note that right now the file's just in the cloud. It's not on my local computer or anything like that. If I want to actually see that file, I can click this download file button. Once I do that, um, I'll get that file here in the browser. It might be in the top right corner if you're using Edge. Um, and then I can click on that file to open it up. And sure enough, we get... Um, all of our rows. So I'll go ahead and click here and then double click on one of these columns to make sure all of the columns are as wide as they need to be. And I can see all of my different records, which this is just really exciting. Um, I'm using a demo environment, so that's why Office isn't activated here. Um, all right, the next thing we want to do is let's actually import a file. So to do that, I'm actually going to save this um, to my downloads folder. We'll call this one import. Then what I can do is I can get rid of several of these records and then we can just kind of change the data. So this is my exported data. I want to import a new different record. Rather than typing all of that from scratch, I'm just going to delete some of these records, all but this like John Smith one, and I'm going to um, change this to a different um, name. Maybe we change it to Mary Smith and then I could change this to a couple different letters. Maybe we change the address to 456. I wanna make sure I'm leaving the customer group, city, country um, alone because I don't want um, those to fail when I import it. The system is gonna do some validation to make sure that these zip codes and addresses are set up in the system. So, all right, I've got a new record that I can import and I'll go ahead and close this file and let's walk through how to import. I'm gonna first go back to our data management workspace, just kind of reset ourselves here. Then I can click the import tile. I can give this a name, FM customer import. I can leave the data project operation set to import. And then in this case, I'm gonna click add file. I get a similar dialog, but it looks a little different. I'm gonna specify the entity name that I wanna run you know, as I import this data. So I'll scroll down and I will find my FM lab customer entity here. I see the source data format is Excel. I wanna leave it that way since that's the type of file that I am importing. Yep, okay, I'm gonna skip staging, then I'm gonna click upload and add. Now I can go to my downloads folder and pick my import file. So here I can see my import file that I've just created. Click OK. System's going to upload that file to the cloud and now it adds a record down on this grid. It's keeping the dialog open so I'm just going to click close to represent that I'm done. All right, now I can do an import and batch, import now, or re-import. I'm just gonna click import now in this case. So I'll click the button and we'll see what happens. System's gonna be reading that file from what we've uploaded. It's gonna run that data entity. You can click on this view map button to make sure that the columns are mapped properly. 
um, but because we exported the file first, that should ensure that they match. And we can see that that import succeeded successfully um, and it created one record. We can always see the staging data if it failed by clicking on this view staging data, or we can look at errors by looking at view execution log, but in this case, it succeeded. That's awesome. So now if we come back to this um, customer's form, which is under fleet management customers customer. And right now I don't see any Mary Smith in here, but if I click the refresh button, voila, now I see Mary Smith. So we've imported a record. So just as an overview, we've exported um, all of these records you, to an Excel file using a data entity. We then modified that file to just have one new record and we re-imported that record um, into the system. And so data entities are extremely helpful in importing lots of data, making it easier. Oftentimes the data structure within D365 um, is spread across a bunch of different tables and there might be more complexity to making sure that those tables were late that's done for performance reasons and size reasons all really good but it makes it a little hard to work with when we're trying to import data data entities kind of flatten that structure out they make it really easy for us um, to use it and really everyone should know how to use um, a data entity because it's just going to make life that much easier uh, rather than having to enter in a lot of data maybe by hand from the front end there's certain types of data that you can really use a file um, to import using a data entity. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching. If you like the video, click the like button. I also invite you to push the subscribe button as well. If there's other topics you would like to see a video on, please post in the comments and I'll see what I can do. I hope you learned something new today. Thank you.